Okay, good morning traders and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Thursday, April 29th. Boutros with you on the wire. Good to be here this morning. Jay, March, and Ted, Tiffany, uh, always a pleasure. So interesting Fed meeting yesterday. You got them obviously holding rates. No, no, no surprise there. The commentary just continuing to pledge um, this really lacks an accommodative monetary policy without a veil. Um, I just thought it was interesting that he pushed back with fervor uh, that they haven't even started to think about talking about um, possible, um, you know, possibly starting to normalize. Uh, Ted is saying the sound is scratchy. Guys, is that for everyone? We should be good. All right, do let me know if that continues to be an issue. Um, but nonetheless, couldn't offer any support for the dollar. And you kind of saw the dollar take that last uh, or another stretch lower, as it were. So we'll hit the DXY levels, Euro, dollar Swiss, Aussie, dollar CAD, dollar yen, gold crude, and Kiwi and sterling. Uh, pretty much covers all the majors, but as always, any other questions or trade setups, feel free to throw them on the message board at any time. Okay. Ted, let me know if you still have a problem with that sound. Uh, made some changes here. Should be good. All right. So where do we start? Well, here's what the DXY looked like last night. So obviously, you know, the break of the weekly opening range, charge a move lower. This is big for me. I talked to you guys about this level for the last couple of weeks. It's 982 into 91, 2017 swing low, 618 of the yearly range. Um, we closed there last week. <sighs> Looks like we're breaking. Now it's a, you know, coming into this week, we've already had three consecutive weeks down. <clears throat> off of a big, big resistance confluence. So could we get a little bit more of a drive? Yeah. If I'm holding shorts, I'm just reducing stops. Um, for new exposure, I would really would be hard pressed to chase this here. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Okay, so yesterday we posted an outside daily reversal into the lows. This is a great development when it happens at the highs like here, um, you know, that's your reversal candle. This oftentimes can be exhaustion. Um, and I find myself again, like I said yesterday, I just don't want to chase this. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. It looks pretty clean within the confines of this near term descending channel off the highs. Nothing's changed there. But you really can't try to, you know, get on board and chase this any lower. In my humble opinion, there's nowhere to put a respectable stop. It needs to be 91.12 on the stop. So no change to any of those levels. Your next major support zone is until 90, 11, 90, 13. It's the February low day close, the 76 retracement. And this year's objective yearly open is just lower. So I think you could get a little bit more noise, a little more chop, broadly speaking, bearish invalidation, or you're, you're, you're on the bearish trail, sub 91.12. Big, big support, essentially right into that 90 handle, as we'll all be looking for a little bit bigger reaction. Any questions on dollar? So one other tidbit, obviously we're heading into the final days of April trade. Tomorrow's the final day of the month. So you wanna be a little bit more cautious as always. We do have some Euro area inflation and GDP coming out. Uh, US gets its GDP core PCE numbers coming out tomorrow as well. So right into the close of the week, you do have some event risk, but dollar certainly probing the lows so yesterday's move did break a lot of weekly opening ranges but just because the weekly opening range broke doesn't mean it's necessarily a straight shot um just to touch again on the fundy side guys of what we got <clears throat> excuse me essentially they just pledged um no change on rates they noted this inflationary talk as transitory we heard these transitory comments before guys nothing new anecdotally my humble opinion, I think this inflation that we're seeing is not necessarily just transitory uh, because you're seeing it in everyday costs, right? 
uh, I'm looking for a house right now. Home prices are through the roof. We 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 explored the possibility of property and building your own house. Lumber is through the roof, right? So the price of uh, of groceries, just your everyday costs, the inflationary costs are definitely starting to rise and they're apparent. The question and the argument of whether those inflationary costs are transitory, I'll leave that to the funding guys. From the technical side of things, it just puts a cap. I think you can only make that argument for so long from the Fed before they're actually going to have to start to move on policy. And as such, is that really a you know carte blanche just bearish for the dollar? That's neither here nor there. And that development and that fundamental argument, you know, is going to take even quarters, if not months, to manifest. So all things held constant. We've broken big support. The risk is lower, sub 90, uh, 82. If we get back above the weekly open, it would be a weekly opening reversal break. I would love that. But all things held constant, we have to be objective. And objectively, we've not only broken lateral key Fibonacci support, we've also broken slope support. We're still in this descending channel. No change to any of those levels from yesterday. Not my favorite setup. Hey, man, great seeing the room. No worries. Not my favorite setup. I'm just going to touch on Euro too because it's the same thing, right? Euro went into its 618 retracement. That was 12, uh, excuse me, 2103. Big zone there. Um, here's a break of the weekly opening range. You know, what do you do with this? Let me take a step back real quick. Here's Euro on the weekly charts. Here we are, 618. Here we are, downtrend resistance. We're trading above that now. If we weekly close above it, it's a breakout, plain and simple. It's not worth debating. Um, and even intraday, while above, the sound is not that clear. Eman saying that too. Uh, guys, give me one sec. I'm just going to reset this. Okay, any improvement there? Should be better testing one, two. Much better. Thanks, Ted. I apologize about that, guys. Yes. All right, right on. Um, so here it is. You know, this is this we want to watch the weekly close to validate, okay, uh, the break higher. Here's Euro, or I mean the weekly close. Here's Euro on the daily chart. Again, you know. 2103 broke. We've tested it for three days, closed above. Yesterday, we closed above the slope. Um, we're seeing some hesitation here along the median line. Not going to look too deep into it, but man, oh man, what do you do? And the question always falls back to an objective one, right? What do you do? If I'm holding longs, I'm doing something, right? I'm doing something, taking a little off the table, bringing my stops up. If I'm looking for new exposure, not looking to play the long side here. You're on the back of a pretty radical stretch into uptrend resistance. If you're looking for new exposure on the possible fade, well, we just haven't gotten the signal yet. Okay, and you don't want to try to catch a falling knife with the same with the same uh, inver inverted example. I don't want to try to hold a balloon underwater, right? So look, this is the prop, this is the pop, this is the break. Here's the test of former slope resistance as support. Everything looks clean. You're looking for 2177. You're looking for the yearly open at 2239. Near term support along that slope, bullish invalidation still has to be 120. This was a massive, massively important level. So no change to any of those levels uh, on Euro. Here's what Euro looked like earlier this week, right before FOMC. Just lateral movement, lateral movement, slope held, and we just blasted through. Questions on Euro? Again, I'm not involved in this one, uh, just as a disclaimer here, but certainly if it's a breakout, you're constructive above 21. So two majors there, DXY, Euro, not really thrilled it with either of them, but that's that's you know where we are. It's one and two. Uh, Swissy was actually a more of an interesting set, believe it or not. 
uh, because we're coming into a big, big support zone right now. And I want to see what kind of reaction we get into this level here today. Here is what Swissy looked like last night. Um, and here's what we look like now. No change to levels, 90, 80, 90, 90. You guys remember about those levels? For those of you who've been with us for a while, uh, we talked about 90, 90, 90, 80 at nauseum into the start, uh, I guess, into the close of last year as we hovered there from July, well, well, until what, November, December, finally break. There was the origin of this massive breakout that we saw back in March and April. Here we are right again. Take it back to the weekly chart. Sorry, going backwards here, guys, but big, big level. Big, big level. This is the 38.2 retracement of the entire advance from the 2015 rally. Excuse me, the 618 of the entire 15 rally and the 38.2 of the entire 2011 rally. Okay, so a huge confluence zone there. Swing lows from 2015. Obviously, there was a debacle we did there last week or last year. And here we are now. Basic slope support off the lows. Both those FIB levels there, the 618 of this year's range is just lower um, right here into, uh, what was it, 9030, I think. I'll show you in the daily chart in a moment here. Uh, but this is kind of the, the idea, the focus that we've been talking about for the last couple of days, looking for some sort of inflection either here or even down into a draw, draw near 9030. That's objective stuff, 618 of the yearly range, plain and simple downtrend support for the broader pitchfork we've been in off the highs. 2018 highs, 2019 highs, really clean pitchfork. There's the median line. So what's that mean? Well, for Swissy, it's a similar scenario in that we made an outside daily reversal into the lows. You know, it threatens exhaustion and we are at support. So for my part, um, I'm looking for an inflection here. If you're holding anything on the short side, this is where I would take a lot off the table, bring it stop to break even, if not close. Uh, a break below this, like I said, 90, 30 is a big zone. Look to the left there. You got a lot of swing lows, a lot of pivot lows from August, September, November of last year. Obviously, the swing high for the opening range of February this year, but you get the picture. So looking for inflection here, if we do break 9030 is going to be your next major support zone uh, for for Swissy. But another one I've been watching recently uh, just to just for a relative price action on dollar euro, right? On all three of those. Uh, and congruent, they're all kind of pushing support on DXY, support on dollar Swiss euro dollar at resistance all at the same sort of inflection point of the 618 of the yearly range big big levels all right so that is swissy <clears throat> number three number four aussie dollar uh well we're at resistance and it's resistance yet again nothing's changed on aussie this thing has been uh at a pretty major resistance level for a couple of weeks now uh, 78 into 78.25. We struck it back here on the April rally. That's where it kind of faltered out. We pulled back, found support at the objective yearly open, rebounded there, rebound again off the yearly open, resistance right back into that same zone. And yesterday, all I wanted to highlight in this piece was that, man, the weekly opening range is pretty clean. Here's your weekly open, ran into the major resistance, pull back, weekly open support held, resistance again puts the emphasis on a breakout of this zone. Now, if we breach, there's nothing to stop 78.70, 78.65. That'd be your first level. 79 is the upper parallel at this point. But, you know, resistance is resistance. Here's what Aussie looks like on the weekly chart. This was the level of which, yeah, we got this massive break and kind of false breakout into the close of March. Um, or I guess since the open of March, rather, excuse me, that's an outside weekly reversal that counts. That's super conviction. Um, what do you do here? Nothing. In my opinion, you're cleaning up alongside of any positioning that you have, and we're looking for inflection near 78, 30, 78, 78 handle, basically. Here's the daily chart. So very clean monthly opening range break happened on the 14th. Beautiful break of downtrend resistance, exquisite, right? 
77.57, beautiful level. That was the high day reversal close that held for a while. This was the last sort of key zone of resistance. So also interesting note here on Aussie guys, look at momentum. There's 60 resistance. And despite the fact that the dollar saw a pretty rough day yesterday, I think we'd all agree, couldn't get much upside pop here in Aussie. And in fact, we posted a two-hour outside reversal candle right into the highs as we ran into that um, as we ran into that uh, resistance region yesterday. Here's the 240. So interesting positioning puts the emphasis on the weekly opening range below resistance here at 78.25. Look for the breakout for guidance here. RBA interest rate decision on tap early next week. If it doesn't break and this holds into the next week, could be the catalyst we need to get this going. All right, that's number four, Aussie. And a big mover yesterday. And a big mover, I suppose, overall this week. Dollar CAD. And what a move, man. So, guys, this is kind of another example of a conviction break and we said this early in the week if this break is legit what's the thing that we said we want to see an acceleration if it's legit i don't want to see a meander if this break is legit it should be a pretty accelerated drop it's the 618 of the rebound off of this year's low it's the close low for the year that we made last month the weekly close low and we made last week actually it's slope support for the downtrend. So current operative downtrend support all converge right there. If that breaks, like we said, accelerated job, we've already taken out the first two levels, 123.58 and then slope support, which we're testing right now. I think we know it's 122.90 or 23. At this point, again, it's, you know, it's the focus is still lower. I don't want to jump into new positioning, but if you're holding it uh, or if you're in a positioning, watch the weekly close. This would be the first break into oversold conditions that we've seen since back here. And you all see what happened back in 2017, right? That break into oversold was actually like midway for the drop. So if this is going to close the week into oversold condition, man, we could find ourselves at 120 pretty quick. So uh, just a cautionary note there for the weekly charts on dollar CAD. What it look like on the daily? Well, another example of a clean monthly opening range break and another example of where you want to use the outside day reversal and developments uh technical developments of this to your benefit and here's the one we got here in dollar cat happened last week we talked about it right off the bat it was on the 21st big outside day reversal took out the entire monthly range and moved lower now that still held support for next two days and we emphasized you know the fact that that outside reversal failed here and we still held support, that's even more important. And that would suggest even more so that if we see this break below 24.70, 24.80, this thing should really start to pick up. And that's exactly what we're getting. Here's the break, you got a one day pause, pitiful bounce. Here's the continuation lower. So 23.58, uh, 23, like I said, is where we had that slope on the weekly chart. Uh, 2018, low day closes 23.12, that was, secondary target last level here is the basic 2018 swing low okay it's 2247 um what a clean week uh monthly opening range break right beautiful beautiful move here's what it looks like on the intraday now real tight uh, i added this channel for you guys last night just kind of show you uh some guidance on the immediate decline it's been all right here's the Here's where we were last night. We we're still just holding resistance at 2018 low day close, 23.12 still uh, has been holding resistance in overnight trade. Here's the slope holding support. Here's the 2018 low at 22.47. So it's one of those trades, guys, where, man, the break, we wanted to see acceleration. We wanted to see a stretch. We got both of those. I still think there's more to go. I don't want to press further shorts from these levels. If you're holding shorts, um, again, my humble opinion, anything northbound of 2360, I'd have a stop there. Uh, next levels of interest, again, 2247 on the downside, 2018 low. And then the low day close for that same calendar year, 
uh, is down lower at 21. But first things first. Any questions on Looney? Number five. Man, ever since the Bank of Canada, you know, it's been a pretty, pretty straight shot lower. The dollar weakness yesterday further exacerbating this move. But a break's a break. All right, dollar yen. Here is what the abomination looks like. So we talked about, well, I guess the major focus was this bounce off of support. Big support level it was. And that was 107.76 into 107.83. The 2017 low week close, it was the 38.2 basic, basic retracement of this year's range. Um, a new rendition of the slope um, has uh, the 25% parallel right there as well. So, man, really nice spot to look for a rebound. And we got it. Now, the rebound failed just ahead of sort of my favorite lever, which was 109.22. Right here at the 50%, it was kind of converging here early in the week. The pullback failed at uptrend support, though, and we are here we are yet again. So my focus, again, here's the daily chart. Remember, that was just a plummet since the whole monthly start uh, open started. And I think we were working on like eight or nine days down before this turn. So here is 108.80, excuse me, was where the... Uh, the 50 was, what is this? Bounce off support and we still got one more leg maybe? I don't know. Here's what I'm looking at with the intraday. All things held constant. This is basic slope resistance. Parallel, parallel. Here's a pitchfork off the low. Median line break, 75% parallel hold. 25% parallel hold. So what I'm seeing here is basically a near-term consolidation below downtrend resistance. You need the breach above 109.20 to validate the breakout, in which case you're looking for 109.68, 109.60s. This is big. Um, you know, I had bullish inval guys at the weekly open earlier in the week on the breakout. I don't think you need to leave it that low. I don't think you need to leave it that low. Um, I'd be comfortable working with something like this as bullish inval. Look, at the end of the day, this is coming off of a massive, massive support. Um, I think, let me take one step back. It's way too early to even assume something like this, but, right? Maybe if this strikes and pulls back a little bit lower, you get that extension towards something like this, where either way, you're looking for a stretch, a stretch or a scratch pretty darn close to 110, maybe not 110, but like 109.60s. Um, but yeah, dollar yen, the abomination has me super interested. And that doesn't happen very often. So uh, we'll be tracking this one like a hawk. All things held constant. We're we're testing downtrend resistance here. <clears throat> Questions on dollar yen. Six. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> gold. So. A little bit disappointed in that gold didn't really give us the bigger stretch, the bigger inflection that we were looking for on FOMC. Um, we're checking major resistance. Nothing changes in the level for gold. I think this one's going to be a major decisive move. And I think this one's going to be the one that will give us the bigger tell on the dollar, to be quite frank with you. Um, is inflation rearing its head? Is it transitory? Fed seems pretty comfortable saying it's transitory. Um, well, at the same time, slamming the brakes and, and really just giving no hopes of any type of normalization as far as a policy stand front. So um, talking out of both sides of my mouth here, guys, longer term, I am still constructive gold. Near term, is the broader pullback completed? 
remember what we said earlier in the year, it was either 1690 or 1650. The, that's where we would have loved to see a low. I mean, that still could be the low, but for me, it's been all about this inflection still. It's been all about this inflection still. So I need to close above 1795 on a weekly standpoint to validate sort of a bigger turn in price for gold. Um, and the beat goes on. Here's gold on the daily chart. Pretty clean. And here's our last update on SB for gold. So here's dollar yen, by the way, guys, no change. What a beautiful play, no change. We're just straddling this resistance zone. Um, we went over dollar CAD, here's gold. So I'll show you the intraday in a moment. Here's the, what I wanted to highlight here on the daily chart is this simple range, 1764, it's 1795, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be shocked if we stretch into 1804. That's two equal legs off the low. If this is going to be a corrective action, you still might get a stab into that before the turn lower. So that's been my broader bearish invalidation. 1804 and above, you're basically looking for a, re a full-on reversal of the entire sort of August decline, the downtrend. Um, but as it stands now, the whole focus and the risk was for exhaustion into uptrend resistance here. You need a break below 1767 to suggest a bigger correction. Here's the intraday chart. Right? FOMC just did nothing. FOMC, all it did was charge a, a full stretch of the weekly opening range. Here's your weekly open. So, look, if we take an objective look at price action here and strip out all of the event risk, we are in this uptrend, this pitchfork. We came into the median line, bounced. The upper parallel converges again on that 100% extension to 1804. So could still stretch into 1804 and pull back. If we break below 1765, you know, pull back within the uptrend with a lot and move near 1750, you're still constructive. You're still constructive. So my whole play on this has been this playoff of uptrend resistance. Are we looking for a bounce off the median line or we get a deeper cut into the upper into the lower parallels before resumption? Um, all things held constant. It's a weekly opening range, guys, set right above that pivot at 1670, um, uh, excuse me, 1767, which is a pivot that we've been watching for months and months and months. Low, low, break, acceleration, break, acceleration, support. It's all about inflection off this zone. Okay. Keeping in uh, with the com block, here's crude. I did give you guys an update on this one um, earlier in the week as we were coming off of pretty nice uptrend support. So here's what the crude weekly chart looked like. I've highlighted this range to you guys for a couple of months now. Uh, it hasn't been worth highlighting because it hasn't been doing jack. Uh, 59 uh, into, into 60, essentially. And then you have the upper bounds of that range, which is essentially into 66 handle. Um, so we've been, ever since this turn, we've been sort of in this zone, right, on the weekly charts. Not much to write home about. The daily chart had us in a really nice consolidation. This month's opening range broke really nicely mid-month. And you got the fueled rally into resistance, which pulled back and tested the opening range as support. Really clean moves, real clean moves. Here's oil on the on the daily chart. Oops. Right. So the whole focus was well, that slope has been pretty phenomenal. Support, support, support. Right. This is big resistance. So you have not only this sort of inflection with a series of lower highs and a series of higher lows, um, but you have this broader slope to the upside. And then you have this downtrend, which if broken, all converged on this zone. So the rally had us looking at an inflection here. 
We failed there yesterday. Is this push legit? Looks like it. It's got a lot of thrust behind it. Top side resistance on the daily chart, the high week close for 2019 comes in at 66.15. Next upside shot, beautiful monthly opening range break, test the monthly opening range highs of support, continuation higher, just textbook, text, textbook. Here's the intraday chart and here's what the scalp looks like. So on those levels, uh, no change really. I think the last target that we had highlighted here was back at the high week close. Oh no, we even went higher. Okay. so. Um, here we are at 65, essentially, which is the 618 extension of the advance off the lows. So just the reference points, boom, boom, boom. That's the 618. Next upside, like I said, 66.15, the upper parallel, there's 100. So even if this whole rally is some sort of massive fake out, right, uh, and it's just two equal legs, it's still a lot to move down or up, rather, to 67.60s. So... I like crude. I like the move. I like if we settle today above 65 would bode well for continued bullish price action in crude. Near term support now 63.85. Bullish inval? It's a good question. Um, yeah, you definitely want to raise that for sure. I'm still going to like 6260, and I'll tell you why. Uh, you have this convergence here. This is the 50% retracement. Ah, okay, cool. You got the 100%. Uh, what is that extension of? It's 100 off the low. What's this then? Oh, this is the 100 off of the, okay, the bigger swing. This is 100 off the low and slope support. So you have all of those FIB con, uh, considerations right here. On the daily chart, look to the left, and I just find these confluence regions really beautiful. Uh, the previous high day outside reversal close, um, you know, comes in at 62.38. So 62.60, 62.38, 20 cent zone, grant me of support. That's that's what I would mark as near-term bullish inval. Make sense? Good question. And again, the energy policy, um, <laughs> as laid out, it's just it's. I don't see how I don't see how you can be bearish. Um, scarcity of resources. I mean, just basic economics. Okay, uh, so that's crude. Uh, number nine, here is New Zealand dollar. So New Zealand dollar, I think we need to pay attention. I hope I didn't just miss this and I'll get really pissed if I did. Um, looking for a reaction right here, which is what we were talking about all week. This might be it. So want to give credence, pay close attention to what we get reaction today around 62.65, uh, 72.65. Sorry, getting too excited. 72.87, this zone here. It's so the high day close for the January pop. It's the 618 of the entire yearly range. It's the swing highs that we made mid-month in March. Okay. Um, I want to see a reaction here. I want to see a reaction here. Here's what it looks like on the intraday charts. Or here's the last update that we gave on Kiwi. Was back here on the 26th. As we were heading into the zone, into FOMC, our focus was on some sort of reaction here. Some sort of reaction here. Um, 78.87. Looks like we literally top ticked it. The high today was 72.87. 86.7 to be exact. Wow. So I want to see how this pans out. I want to see how this pans out. This is one of those trades where, you know, hadn't quite gotten textbook divergence but momentum's looking tired right around 60. it's been really nice monthly opening range break that happened on the 14th okay great mm, getting tired some sort of inflection 
here's what the intraday chart looks like now. Right, so no change to any of those levels. We've simply stretched, stretched, and here we are looking for inflection here. A breach above 72.85, like I said, there's nothing until 73.70. So it's almost a 100 pip rally up if this breaks. And as I always say, why I love these kind of setups, guys, because if a breach of uptrend resistance breaks, well, that's typically the sharpest part of the rally. So if you take a short against this, if you're wrong, you're going to know you're wrong pretty quick because the break will probably rip. And with the same respect, this is a good confluence zone of resistance on the upside. So if you're a little more nimble, more, more uh, lighter on your feet, uh, this would be an area of which you'd look for a little bit more of a pullback. Again, weekly open support is at 71.88. But it's all about this pivot into 72.87. If this breaks, you'd likely see an accelerated rally higher. Questions on New Zealand dollar at resistance, at confluence resistance. Here's Kiwi on the weekly charts, just for a reference. 618 of the entire yearly range, right here. Former slope support off last year's, what, that May low? Boom, break, resistance here. I don't know, four weeks up, five weeks up. When's the last time we saw that? Was back here. There's a one day interruption. Interesting. It's a proof of thought there. But I think warranting, warranting attention here at this inflection point. All right, last but not least, I can't believe Sterling somehow ended up last on this list. Uh, here's the British pound. <clears throat> and again, I think uh, with this trade, for me, it's kind of just on the sideway here. I don't want to, I don't have any exposure here. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I thought this was actually, might actually be a decent short uh, to try to play another, another poke into this major key support zone. So this was so important. Uh, you guys know this is my favorite Fibonacci confluence zones, 100 off the high, 618 off the low, or vice versa. Um, you know, we probed just into it, opened up the week with a weekly opening range right below Fibonacci resistance. Yesterday it broke, but the break didn't really feel much. And here we are again, sitting at the weekly opening range highs. What do you do, right? Major resistances until 140, 140, 20. That's where we turned last week. We've been eyeing that region for a while since the low. It's a 618 the entire drop. But what do you do here? I don't have anything. Again, ideal scenario, pistol to my head. This thing flops one more time for a rally towards that zone and maybe failure again here. Look for a resistance for a move lower towards slope support. Uh, if we don't get that rally and this just breaks down for another drive lower, I'd be looking for an inflection, possible exhaustion on a move down here. From this zone, your mid-range. I don't have anything to do here on Sterling. Nada. And you don't even have anything major uh, coming out of the UK until next week with the BOE. So even from an event risk standpoint, we're going to need something to give this thing a kick. Another trade, I liken this one to um, what we saw in Aussie. You know, the fact that the dollar fell out of bed last night, <clears throat> or yesterday, excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, out of bed yesterday after the Fed, uh, couldn't offer any strength, couldn't, get, couldn't put real legs under this ascent. So it has me on the sidelines thinking, nah, I'm not going to chase this one. So unfortunately, Sterling takes another side bench with the euro and DXY uh, over the next couple of days until we get some sort of clearing of this uh, near term move. Uh, I want to open up to you guys. Questions, trade setups you want to review. Uh, feel free to throw them on the message board. Uh, we're light on uh, data until we get 
pretty much until we get to next week with some of those interest rate decisions from the RBA and the um, and the uh, and the BOE. But certainly uh, heading into the close of the week tomorrow, look for some of those GDP and core inflation rate uh, inflation figures from Eurozone. And certainly the PCE, core PCE numbers from here in the US is expected to show an uptick. Here's the thing, the Fed has already thrown this out multiple times that they're gonna see inflation, expect inflation, expect inflation near term, transitory, transitory, transitory. So now it becomes harder as a trader uh, for us to kind of delineate the variation from the expectation when we get these prints on inflation. Because even if you see inflation move higher, which would typically be, you know, okay, uh, higher rates, you know what I mean? Or whatever fundamental thought process you follow, now that starts to get softened because everyone's expecting near term this for it to be transitory. So just a note there, Rohan, I haven't covered the S&P, man. Here's what I'm looking at with that. It's all sloped from here. Like I said, guys, there's really nothing to stop this thing. Uh, you just got to push all those targets over. So like 42, 40s on the upside, former resistance, now support. So 42 as support, 4190, 92. Bullish inval, I'll raise that from 4120 to 4150. No change. So here's the daily chart just for your reference, Rohan. He says, sweet. Yeah, there's nothing, um, there's really nothing here to kind of shatter anything just yet. Um, it's all sentiment from here, complete sentiment driven. The day of reckoning is coming. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy just waving the red flag. Um, and I do think things are going to catch up with us pretty abruptly at some point, but till it happens trend is your friend right and then we look at other ancillary markets that seem to be making their turns on their own independent of what risk is doing here's the 10-year treasury that breakout we talked about on monday's webinar um, and i showed you this chart right here i said well guys this is a big support zone this is a massive level that we've already tested earlier in the month tested it again twice over the last couple of days look for a breakout if we break out of this downside formation, if we break out of this trend resistance, we are looking for resumption. Initial targets 68 and 70 as far as the uh, yields are concerned. Well, we're knocking on the door in 68 today. Here's the same chart on the intraday. This is the same exact setup, guys, I showed you on Monday. Nice rounding bottom here. You try to give this thing maybe some structure to the advance and it further highlights the resistance whoops and support all right um just a quick look at the VIX. That's still pretty pathetic, but we expect that to change in the days ahead. So, uh, Marchin, Sterling, or I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Swissy Yen. I'm not sure uh, on this one, Marchin. I might be bearish. <laughs> All right, so you got a, a major breakout to fresh yearly highs. Um, here's the weekly. Hmm. Bear with me one sec. I just want to check out a couple of different slopes that could be in play here. 
What the heck is that? Okay, yeah, we could work with something like that. And basically, what we want to do with big moves like this, and I, again, I don't know what you're doing with this, Marchin. If you're in a long already, congratulations, well done. Um, but I wouldn't get, you know, I, I, I avoid bringing these trades up, guys, because this. And this is just my experience over the years. It encourages so much chasing on the retail front. And it's the last thing I want to encourage you guys to do. So <clears throat> you see a breakout like this. You want to start to chase it. You're looking long. Yeah, and then you get in a long position. You've already stretched a huge amount. All of a sudden, you're upside down on a long position as we pull back. Um, 120.32 is the 50 off the yearly high from the 2015 drop. Um, the other extension I would give a lot of merit to would be this. I can use this low. And look at that confluence zone. Key support. Yearly open. So actually, <clears throat> this could be a yearly opening range break. If this, if this is a break of the sort of yearly opening range, it would certainly shift the focus higher uh, for, for Swiss yen. Look for an inflection right up here into 120.32 would be my sort of march and go-to level on this. Um, And just within the confines of this year's range. Oh, it looks like I did have some. You did ask about this last week, did you? <clears throat> so there's the breakout. Yeah. So actually, that ended up really being really nice, tidy. Consolidation pop break. Not bad. Yeah, watch those, watch that resistance target that we just looked at on the weekly chart. That's my go to there. Uh, the other one you're looking at is uh, Code Singapore. Yeah, it's a play on the emerging. You know, Interesting. So this could be, and I've, I feel like I've looked at this for some reason. Um, this could be a couple of different renditions going on. I know a lot of people are looking at this as sort of descending channel break, check his support, move off. 
but I'm not too crazy about that. So I'm not so interested in this one. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, Marchin. It's, again, I start with the weekly and we drill down, right? Um, it's something I'd be interested in tracking for sure. Um, but from here, brother, this thing is just a, here's your yearly open, man. Here's your yearly opening range low. Here's your really yearly opening range high. If this was a break of the yearly opening range high, it was sort of a false break scenario because you're right back in it. So. Man, this is like basically almost unchanged. What you're up a percent maybe on the year? Ah, there's nothing for me here, man. There's nothing for me here. Gunshot, you know, again, got pistol to my head. I'd be looking for exhaustion on this stretch for a bounce right now, right here. But is there conviction on that for an actual setup? Um, I don't think so. Let me revisit this one. Interesting. I don't really get into the exotics in the yeah, emerging markets as much, but it's uh, that's not something that kind of draws my attention as something as a viable trade idea from here. If anything, watch for possible exhaustion on the downside on this on this pullback. It's already beat the six one eight. Yeah, it's now or never. All right. It says, okay, thank you. More than welcome. Tiffany, can you look at sterling yen as well? Uh, looking for topside targets. Sterling yen, uh, a much more popular pair. So 52.90 was the 88.6. That's exactly where this thing capped out. You put, posted an outside daily reversal off that level. This is the weekly chart, actually. I'm sorry about that. Um, off that level and pulled back. So it's essentially the exhaustion pullback. Is that the resumption? I think you actually see another exhaustion break um, for a larger like ABC type correction before you, before you move higher. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Give me a sec. So monthly open resistance right here. Tiffany at 52.46. That's your objective monthly open. And then again, 52.90, still going to be that 88.6 retracement. Here's the intraday. Let's see what the scalp looks like. Take a snapshot, Tiffany, if you need, of this chart. I'm going to rework these levels, uh, hopefully this weekend, um, and we'll see if it's a different outlook coming into next week. But it looks to me like a contraction within the monthly opening range just below upslope resistance. I know it's a, little, it's a mouthful, but that's, that goes to say that we could see a little bit more of contraction while below into this 53 level, right? Um, but I don't necessarily want to buy into uptrend resistance. You know what I mean? And we're at the monthly open. Did we post an outside weekly? No. Yeah, last week was an outside weekly reversal lower. That's the exhaustion, right? 
Here's the snapback. It's broadly constructive trade. I just don't think you get exhaustion. And if this is a five wave count advance, one, two, three, four, five, that's what has me looking for, okay, we've sort of completed this set. Let's look for the uh, corrected move before completion. But that's all determined on 52.90. TIFF, if, TIFF, if 52.90 breaks on a closed basis, 55 it is. Does that make sense? Great, thanks. Uh, I have 52.50 as my take profit. Yeah, right on, right on. All right. Makes sense, right on. Okay, great. Well, guys, that's all I've got, and I've got through all your questions. Um, so we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Watch for those inflation numbers from the EU and the US heading to the close of the week. I don't necessarily think you'll get anything major, and I think the Fed has padded any type of inflationary pop with all this commentary. I mean, even if you see inflation running like 3%, I think you can be, oh, well, it's transitory. We told you so, right? Gosh, God help us. So it's going to be an interesting uh, month heading into um, May. I want to, again, just give you guys a quick note to be careful heading into tomorrow, into the close of the month and the close of the week. Not the best time for intraday trades. Not as bad as the quarterly flips, but certainly uh, just a good time to kind of ease up on the leverage and ease up on your positioning um, as we open up the new month. Have a great weekend. I will see you all next week, Monday, for the free session on Daily Effects, and then right back here on Tuesday and Thursday. I'm sorry. Next week, we have our uh, Wednesday session on Daily Effects. So uh, for this, uh, for SB, we'll be back here on Thursday. So Monday and Wednesday on Daily Effects, and then shortened week, we'll be right back here on Thursday. Best of luck trading this week, guys, and I will see you on Monday. Cheers. <laughs>